Uh, Coach Hall, uh, start excitement of being here. Um, obviously, it's been a whirlwind week for you. What are, what's your excitement level right now? And sort of talk about the emotions that you've gone through in the past week. Yeah, I mean, scale of 1 to 10, my excitement's a 12. Um, it's been something that me and my family were hoping for going through the process. And as we kind of got down to the end and um, thought it was a good chance and then obviously getting offered the job, I mean, I've just been itching to get down here. Um, bittersweet, obviously being at Chihuahua for as long as I have been, but I'm really, really excited to take on this challenge and this opportunity. Now, move into the excitement level, not just you, but, but uh, all the women that you live with in your house. Yep. So what's been their excitement level over the past week? No, I think they're super pumped as well, too. I think just we're at a point in our lives as a family where we kind of knew change was coming and we wanted to find a really good place. Um, me and my wife, Amy, you know, wanted to find the right fit for me, but more importantly, we want to find the right fit for our family, and we feel like we found it here at UNCP. Now, talk a little about your background, starting with your playing career at Urbana. I know I was probably just as surprised as well as this morning if I found out what, what position you did play at yeah. Urbana. But talk about your background, what got you to where you are now, starting starting in your playing career. Well, football's always been my first love. Um, I actually played college baseball my first two years. Um, my mom wouldn't let me play football until I was in junior high. So, you know, but football was always my first love as a sport and um, played college baseball for two years and realized I wanted to do what I loved to do, which was play football. So I came back home and went to Urbana and played and clearly wasn't good enough to make it to the NFL. Um, and I knew, you know, I wanted to be around the game and my the way that I thought I could do that was in coaching. And I've always had a desire to to coach and I've always loved offensive football and so just kind of led me to the path of coaching and you know here we are 17 or 18 years later and I'm here at UNCP. Now you've had a lot of success with turning around Chawan the past couple of seasons as head coach most wins in 39 years you won a uh, CIAA North Division title you made an appearance in the CIAA championship game I asked you this uh, last week on your interview what were some of the keys of turning around that program and changing the culture in that program? Yeah, I think it was just, you know, getting the right kids and the right coaches in the building, you know, finding guys that wanted to buy into something um, that, you know, when you take over teams, especially when you take over at a time where maybe they hadn't had success, getting that initial buy-in is always crucial um, because it, it does take some kind of blind faith um, because you really don't have the results to back it up. And so, you know, and it, what we decided was the easiest way for us to do that was just create a relationship with the players and, you know, create a family atmosphere where guys wanted to be in the building and enjoyed being with their coaches and their teammates. And we just thought that could get carried over to the field. And, you know, sure enough, it did. Um, you know, so that helped us, you know, in 2021. We started off 5-0. and We ended up making it into the top 25 in the AFCA poll. First time Chuan's ever been ranked. And, so it just gives that confirmation to the players like, oh, yeah, these guys know what they're talking about. So, you know, kind of once you win them over and then the results start happening, you know, then you kind of have it and then you just roll from there. So, you know, the, the players there were huge in that regard for me. It's just they believed in what I wanted as a head coach. They believed in what the staff wanted. And it showed up on Saturdays for us. Now, someone spends 15 years in one place. Obviously, both your daughters were born. Uh, in Murfreesboro, or while you're at Murfreesboro, yep. your roots are generally pretty deep planted and something like that. So, what attracted you to UNCP, and what were the thoughts that led up to you throwing your name into that? Uh, right. I think the big thing was is I felt like we were only going to be able to go so far at Chawan, um, just because of the limited resources and the things that you know, make that program and that school what they were. And we did the absolute most we could with it. And just, again, me being down here for as long as I have, you kind of learn the landscape of who you're competing against. And so, you know, me being at Chuan, I kind of knew what UNCP had to offer. And, um, you know, I just felt like this place was, from a football perspective, a sleeping giant, you know. And, and that was attractive to me because I'm a competitor, you know, I want to win and I want to win at an extremely high level and I, I don't want to just make conference championship games or compete for conference championship games. We want to win conference, we want to get into the playoffs, we want to win playoff games and, you know, 
I think that this place has all the makings of a program that can do that. So that was really what drew me to it. And then once I got to know more and meet the people, then I knew, okay, this place can be special. So I couldn't be more excited. And the human interest side of things and the coach's wife's uh, side of things, what were the conversations with Amy and, and your daughters about possibly making a move after 15 years? Yeah, again, that's what sold us, honestly. We got in the car leaving here last week, and um, I think we both just had the feeling that we could fit in well here as a family and that there was just a bunch of people that were passionate about UNCP and this area and this community, and I think they were passionate about wanting football to be successful as well. And, you know, so that's what made it very comforting in that regard of, you know what, yeah, we are making this move, but we're going to a place where people are going to care and they're going to support us and, you know, we're going to be able to fit in. Our kids are going to do well. And so it, it checked off all the boxes. So we were, we were thrilled about that. Now in your press conference, you called UNCP, and you've already hit on this a little bit, you called UNCP a sleeping giant. What are your thoughts behind that and what, what makes you label UNCP? Well, I mean, in my time as a Division II coach, if you look at the teams on the national level that are consistent competitors in Division II football, usually there's two, you know, beginning criteria to do that, and that's state-funded and fully funded scholarship-wise, and, you know, UNCP provides that, and I'm not, that didn't even get into the North Carolina promise aspect of it as well, so I think you got the, the main things that you're looking for, which is the funding um, that really it takes to be a consistent competitor on the national level and it's been done here before and that's always a good thing as well and you know and it hadn't been that long ago either so it can be done and I think that all the ingredients are there I think we're just going to have to come in and do the right things and do it together and work at it and when we get it going I think that's my expectation is to be a national program. What are your uh 30, 60, 90-day goals uh, as you come in. And I know this day is going by like a whirlwind, but what do you hope once you get settled, what are your 30, 60, 90-day goals? Yeah, I think for us is, you know, the first 30 days is all about the relationships with the players. I mean, get a staff in place, get to, get, get to know these guys, let them to get to know us, you know, build a, a foundation for a meaningful relationship within the program. And then, you know, 60 days, by that point, we should be rocking and rolling in our strength and conditioning program with Coach Minnie. Um, and what I want is for us to feel good about being able to go into spring ball and guys feel good about being able to compete at the level we want um, those guys to practice at. And then, obviously, once we hit the 90-day mark, we're going to be close to spring ball being over and the semester being over and kind of getting into the summer. And... If we're at the point going into the summer where we feel like we are trending in the right way as a program where, you know, the kids here have bought in and they're working at the right level that we want and, you know, we've become the the team that I want them to be and then obviously we feel good about the new people we're bringing in, I think we can hit the summer session with a lot of momentum and carry that through into fall camp and then put ourselves in a position to be able to play Fayetteville State. Now you're the, the, the optimist with your 30, 60, 90 day goals. What do you feel is your biggest challenge? I think in all of that, it's really just because we're dealing with 100 new people. Um, and that's the part of it that there's really no manual that you can pull out and execute off of. It really takes hard work. And some kids are going to buy in immediately and be all about it. Some kids are going to kind of be one foot in, one foot out. And then there's going to be those kids that are going to maybe fight fight and say, well, I'm not sure. I'm not ready to buy in. And so getting the human element of it all together is the greatest challenge. And maybe we don't get it all together by 60 or 30 days but we don't play anybody in 30 days. So um, we got we got some time to kind of get this thing figured out. And, you know, as I told the team today, I want guys that want to be here. And I hope they decide to stay and buy into what we're doing. And I believe if they choose to believe in what we are doing and stay, we'll, we'll win together. And they'll look back on their time and be like, I'm glad I, I stuck around for Coach Hall and the new era of UNCP football. Now you have some conversations to have over the next few days. Uh, as far as assembling a staff of assistant coaches, obviously yeah. that's one of your challenges here in the next 30 days as well. Um, 
what will that process look like for you and, and when do you hope to have your staff completely filled? Yeah, so we're right in the mix of having the conversations. Obviously, I, I want to have conversations with the guys that are still here. Um, and then obviously, I got guys in, that I've worked with in the past that are in the mix as well. Um, you know, my goal with getting that completed is, you know, I want to try to have the majority of that done by the time the kids get back here for the semester in January. It might not be 100%, but if we can have our core guys in place the guys that I'm going to be really leaning on and leaning into to kind of drive the the new culture and the new way of doing things hopefully everybody's there by you know that January 9th January 10th date when kids start classes uh, I asked you this last week uh, on your interview as well what talk about the schemes that you run both offensively and defensively and what fans can expect to see from the stands when they go to your first game in September well Offensively, we're going to be extremely multiple. Um, you know, everybody always asks me, are we a spread team? We'll have elements of the spread um, in there, but we're going to be extremely multiple. We're going to motion a lot. We're going to run a million different formations. Uh, we're going to run the football. We're going to win the physical part of the game. Um, but we're also going to throw. We're going to be balanced. We want to be explosive and physical, um, and we want to make – we want to make the defense struggle to prepare for us. And then defensively, you know, we're going to be aggressive. Um, we're kind of different. I think everybody in today's football is some sort of a too high defense and they play a lot of zone coverage. You're not going to see that from us. Um, we are a one high, middle closed, cover three, cover one, be aggressive, blitz, be multiple. Um, we want to get after the QB. We're going to be extremely fast and physical. And then special teams, that's something that we're going to really stress as well. Um, you know, that's a phase of the game that I expect us to win week in, week out. And I think it was huge for our success at Chawan was being able to have success on special teams. Our best players on offense and defense are going to play on special teams. But in general, when the fans show up every Saturday, I'm hoping that they see a team that is the hardest playing team, that has the most fun, the most energy, is the most physical. Um, you know, because I feel like if we have great energy, then the fans will uh, match that, and then we'll have a great environment. So that's what I'm hoping we can develop over the next seven months. And some important for you right now, in the harder recruiting season, and recruiting season actually wrap up here in about a month and a half. Um, what is your recruiting philosophy in general, and then what is your recruiting philosophy as far as in-state products go? So in general, what we want to do is try to build, you know, like a 60-40, 65-35 model for us, which is high school to transfer ratio. Um, we don't want to be transfer you, but we are going to utilize the transfer portal and JUCO kids. Um, but we want kids that are in state, obviously, you know, I feel like that, especially with this place being a state school, it's, it would be in our benefit to have as many North Carolina kids as we could. Um, you know, we want in-state kids to be excited about UNCP and UNCP football. Um, you know, so we got some challenges ahead of us with the timeline of everything. You know, we're going to try to make this mad push to signing day, but I'm kind of expecting for us to continue that process past signing day. Um, my main priority is to just find the right kids that fit us, um, both as a program and as a staff and the university. And if that goes past signing day, so be it. Um, some of the best kids that we've ever gotten have been kids that we've gotten post signing day. So obviously we want to be a big participant in signing day, but um, right now my main goal is that when our team shows up here, in August that we have the right guys and however long it takes to get those guys, then it takes what it takes. So, Good segue. Uh, other than talent, when you go out on the recruiting trail, what are you looking for in a play? I mean, talent obviously is kind of the underlying thing, but character, toughness, um, guys that are team oriented, you know, those are going to be the questions that we ask coaches. Um, is the kid tough? Is he like to be coached or is he just a kid that wants to, you know, do his own thing? Does he care about the team or does he only care about himself? Um, you know, because those things matter um, if you want to build a championship team. And so we got to check those boxes off in the process of 
finding the right kids. You know, one thing, you know, and I'm not going to hide it, we're going to coach our kids extremely hard um, in an effort to push them to a place as a player that they don't even know exists yet. And sometimes kids aren't receptive to that. Sometimes kids love it. And if a coach tells me, well, you, this kid can't really be coached hard, he might be really talented, but he's not going to fit UNCP. And what I've learned as I've gotten older as a coach, when I was younger, I only recruited talent. I watched the kids film. The kid was fast. He could catch. He could run. He could block. He could tackle. And you just recruit all talent. And then you get the kid there, and you're like, well, I'm having a hard time getting through to him because me and him don't see eye to eye, or he doesn't necessarily fit our program. The fit matters more than the talent. Obviously, we can't have 100 non-talented players. Um, but I think if we can find the right mix of guys that can play football at a high level, but also fit the characteristics of what we're looking for, then we'll, then we got something cooking. And your last question for you. Once you get established in this program, if people came in, peeled the layers back of your program, what are the defining points in the culture of a Mark Hall coach program? I think if they peeled back the layer, you would really just see a true family environment. I know that's something that gets talked about a lot, but I really value the relationship I have with these kids, and I want them to do that as well. I, I say this a lot to players. When you're 40, like I am, I'm 42, you look back on your college experience, you don't remember the locker room, you actually don't remember all the outside stuff. The thing you remember most are your experiences and the relationships. So we wanna make sure that those, they leave out of here and those are a, a positive and that they look back on their time and they made their best friends for life and they made memories that you can't take away. And chances are, if we create those things, they're gonna come back. Um, and that's really what we want it to be about. Yeah, there's going to be hard times. There always is. Um, families are tricky sometimes, but we look forward to those too. So, you know, that's really what it is about. I want it to be about meaningful relationships and everybody working towards one common goal. And, um, you know, I'm looking forward to that challenge of establishing that here and now. And you know, I think we'll get it done. Coach, appreciate your time. Appreciate you guys. Go Braves.